Hi, this screencast is going to walk through how the Web4 module for Drupal 8 has been Ajaxified. Hi, my name is Jake Brockwoods. I'm known as Jay Rockwoods on the web. I'm a Drupal developer and software architect. I built and maintain the Web4 module for Drupal 8. Well, what's been Ajaxified? Web forms can now be submitted using Ajax, and the element and handler UI has been Ajax enhanced. And I'll walk you through these. Um, Ajax finding a web form simply involves turning on Ajax support, setting the confirmation type, usually inline or message is recommended for the confirmation type, and, and dialogues and modals are supported, and I'll, I'll, I'll give you a little demo of that. And then when it comes to the UI, email handlers are now using Ajax, and managing elements is using Ajax, and it improves the user experience UX. And, and if you leverage the system tray, which is an experimental module called Outside In, the user experience is greatly enhanced. And I'm going to just start demoing it to you. So I'm going to jump over. This is a clean install. And I like using the contact form as a starting point, so I'll show you the contact form. And you know, I'll go over to the test tab, and you know, you submit, and it's got to reload the whole page. I'm going to go back. By the way, I have all my test modules turned on because I kind of want to show you some things behind the scenes. But I'm going to go over into Settings. I'm going to expand all claps on. You're going to see this new Ajax setting. And if I say Use Ajax. And now what's interesting is confirmation type, you get this little warning when you turn on and off to really say you kind of want to use inline messages, which I think is a good idea for this demo. And your message has been sent, but you could put anything in. And... You know, just to improve the demo a little bit, I'm going to go turn on preview. Do it optional. It's all defaults. I'm going to hit save. Now we're going to go over to the test tab. Here's the form, and here's the new um, progress bar. And I'm going to hit preview. And you're going to see it just quickly refreshes. And then if I hit send message, we get the full message with all the log stuff. We go over to view, and I just want to show you validation is working too, because subject and message is missing. If we hit preview, the error message displayed at the top. Um, this is available for all forms. You can just turn it on. You can have forms and blocks that are using this behavior, and you can do redirects. And because um, the forms are Ajaxified and they're working in Ajax, if I go to the home page, I have this little experimental block, which these are the test forms that I use to test this functionality. So for example, if I click open, it's going to open a modal dialog, and all it's doing is testing that the confirmation will be displayed in line. You can see that working. And if you hit back, it'll jump back. And now if I do open test dialog, like open the test Ajax, this is a very simple form with a preview with a validation. You're seeing how Dialogues are working with this Ajax handler. One thing I am struggling with, and I can even show it to you if I fill this out, test, and I hit submit, is, is how to handle these confirmations, which gets a little trickier. Because you kind of sometimes you want to close the window, sometimes you want a timer. This is something where developers might have to step in and tweak it a little bit. So that's the first part about Ajaxifying a web form. And now I want to show you how the admin UI is being done. And, and while I'm getting over to there, I want to talk about kind of why I brought in the Webform Ajax module. And, and one of the goals was to get some code in place in the Webform module to support Ajax, to get some, I'm using traits to kind of take a form and enhance it, to enhance the callbacks to use Ajax. And when I did it for the front end form that we just looked at, it opened up the possibility to be able to do it for the back end. So I can actually go in and show you a few of these things. Um, I started off in just walking through kind of developers how I did it. I did it first for handlers because it was a simpler thing. So if I wanted to add another email, I can hit add email and hit send. And what you're going to see is it takes the message and puts it at the bottom and just re it doesn't reload the page. It just refreshes it. And the same behavior kicks in for elements. And I, I always do this demo where I add a company field. So if I go in text field and I say company, and let's do the full one, your company. We add your company and I hit save. It's going to just refresh, highlight in green, and then fade away the message in the thing. And then if I want to refresh, like if I move it to the top and set require, and I scroll down and I hit save elements, it's not going to reload the whole page. The toolbar doesn't jump. The experience is much faster. And what really is great was when you turn on the outside in, which I'm going to show you right now, I'm going to enable the outside in. And what that does is it opens up a system tray, which is a, kind of like a sidebar. I'm going to hit refresh, and I'm going to just start to show you how this book creates this kind of amazing experience. So let's say we wanted to tweak company. 
it opens up this little sidebar and you can scroll through. By the way, I'm on a very small screen. I haven't made any changes, but let's let's just scroll down. By the way, that's a bug in there. You have to scroll all the way to the bottom. But if I hit save, it just refreshes. Very, very clean. Same thing applies to handlers, where if I want to edit this handler, I can review the whole handler, scroll through, hit save, and it just refreshes and it'll scroll. It scrolls to whatever's been updated to try to help you understand what's going on. There are some limitations here. Um, the performance of these elements, because it's just the nature of core right now, is I have to refresh the entire table here. If you have 100 elements, it's a little slow. It's still much faster than if there was no Ajax. It has to reload everything. It has to reload these dropdowns. It's kind of a performance hit. But I'm very happy with just being able to Ajaxify the front-end forms. I think for small forms or multi-step forms is a huge improvement. Um, and I recommend everyone start experimenting and using this functionality. Continue forward. I kind of want to talk about what, what's amazing about this feature is it, it's, I love this concept of a fluid user experience. That's what I'm striving for with the web form module, this kind of ease of use where things just work and flow. And as you're moving through it, you kind of gradually understand it and see how things work. And I think Ajaxing, Ajax finding the front end forms and the back end UI has really helped improve that experience and I'm going to keep working on it and it's really what's next for web form Ajax support and and that system tray is part of this quick edit and it's quick edit it's the outside in initiative it's starting to get web form and element previews working and improve support for large forms like long forms that we're I'm having some performance hiccup with that anyway I hope you enjoy that feature and I just want to end with how I can I help you with web forms in Drupal 8? Um, I can help you with training and support, building a feature. Yeah, just contact me and you can reach me at jrockwoods.com or jrockwoods at drupal.org. And thanks for your time.